Well, hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards. We love to improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. One of the best things I did, I think, uh, when we first got um, our two old English sheepdogs was to, just like you see on TV and you hear a lot, is to basically show them that you are the pack leader. You're the boss. Yeah. But I think that sometimes you kind of fall off the cart because just like having kids, they look you in the eye and they say, Uh uh-huh. And you know they, you feel they like do that. and you kind of cave. That. And the here, and <laughs> yeah. here's the best thing I ever did. I borrowed your dog crate cage. The crate, yeah. Because we got a puppy the uh, you know a couple of weekends Little ago. Forced. I was sitting at my son Dusty's basketball game, and this woman walked up and said, "Would you like the puppy?" And I simply blurted out the words, "Yes, I would." And then I quickly covered my own mouth as if I'd said a horrible swear word. Like, what the heck are you know, thinking, right? I know. Then I'm driving home with this dog on my lap, and Forrest is a little black lab, and he was apparently, this was the story I was told, found in a forest. See? So Hence the name, name Forrest. So let's talk about what some tips to, uh, well, when you do become a sucker. Thank you. <laughs> want to get a, a dog. Right. I mean, because who doesn't love that adorable face? But the thing is, you have to know that there's a lot of money attached to having a dog and there's a lot of steps to preparing your home. So it's not only safe for the pet, but also that it's not ruined because, I mean, there's a lot of things that can go, can go wrong. I mean, oh, I, oh, it's ruined. I, Trust me. It's never ruined. Oh, wait till you see the corner of my stairs. Have they been really? chewed? Really? Forest Beyond, has been yeah, not, well, and then he forest. In other words, gra- you're saying that the forest doesn't fall far, far from the from trees. The tree, yeah. <laughs> he actually pulled the carpet string. You know, like he found a little nub on the end uh, of the carpet and just started, and started pulling tearing. like twenty feet down the hallway, and all of a sudden this thing's unwinding as I come up the stairs and see him. Right. So let's talk about some of the the basics because uh, you know this is kind of dog show season. You're going to be seeing a lot of the big dog shows on TV, and that's a great way, by the way, to begin your research on the best dogs that you love for you because you're going to see him parading around and then you fall in love with the look and and the the enormity of the dog or how small it is or the fur Uh quality and and the upkeep but then you have to kind of find out okay well what's the personality like and does it fit with my family and then how do you raise them so that they're going to be uh, well-mannered right right Right, and in my case, for Hazel, my Labradoodle, the last dog that we we still have her, and she's just looking at us going, what the heck are yeah. you thinking? What would you bring this psycho Aww. in the house Well, you know, for? dogs, and just like people, they can get jealous and feel like, you know, all of a sudden that they've been uprooted it's, from it, the it's, hierarchy, It brought right? out uh, sort of this maternal instinct in her, and now she has to assert herself as the pack leader. Mm, right, right, which is normal, which right? is interesting because she wants to be like the mom. I've right? never seen her this snappy. Oh, really? Right. So, so now, now it's just created this whole psychological turmoil in the house that's it doesn't feel the same. So, right? let's talk about the crating because, um, so here it is. If you were thinking about getting a, a dog or a puppy or no matter what, I mean, a lot of times you might get an adult dog, and I think that really adult dogs, older dogs, because we have we have uh, Bailey and Abby, and our older dog, their mother and daughter, our older dog, I think, in many ways has this. Wisdom Wisdom and has, has this preciousness that sometimes exceeds how cute a little puppy can be. No they question. both had their special qualities. But yeah, she's your older 12. one's like Mary Poppins. She, yeah, I mean, she's the younger she's one is, in the is kind of like Sybil. <laughs> Thanks a lot. A little bit. <laughs> but I, but basically, uh, when we got when we got Bailey uh, and and then Abby came along, we started with the crating thing, and and so I've encouraged you, and you now have sure. the crate. But the whole idea is that when a dog is in this little cave. They're not going to soil their own little cave because right. that is their, that's their bed, right? right? right and so, right. how is it working for you? So it's that's... worked pretty good. I mean, this is now week two, and and uh, Forrest has been in the crate every night, and he can make it until about four a.m. and then he does ooh, 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 does that mm-hmm. thing in the mm-hmm. scratching. And I take him out. Keep in mind, it was about thirty-one degrees last night when I took him out in the in the yard, and I put him down, and he literally runs right back to the door because he doesn't want to be out there at mm-hmm. all. And I was like, look, dude, I can't hold you while you go to the restroom. Right. You're going to have to do this on your own now. So I kept putting him further and further out into the yard until finally it all worked out. Gets back in and two hours later does the the same thing. And then my wife's like, are you getting him or am I? Aww. It's like one of those. It feels like we've got babies again in, in the diapers, right? So um, we take him out again. And, 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 you know, he's starting to get the hang of it. He's great going into the crate. Um, the problem now is is... To that transition time from when he's in the house during the day, mm-hmm. just to unsupervised. Right. Well, they say you got to keep an eye on him. They say so that closely. four four hours is the maximum in in the crate all by yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know, that's but, been it. But the idea and the goal is is that that's going to 
you know, give them that little bit of a, of a boundary, if you will, because sure. if you let them just run all over the house, now they're going to just, they're going to have accidents, and it's not setting some good ground rules. So far, he's bitten my daughter's face, my mom's leg, and drew blood. He's also no. bit, yes, he's, no. yeah, he bit my ankle several times, and then I fell down in the kitchen when Uh-oh. I was preparing a fine Uh-oh. walk meal. Oh, so he's kind of nuts, I think. <laughs> well, so this you, you got to show who's boss, right? So yeah. besides uh, creating your your sleep, you know, the sleeping area and the wee wee area boundaries, right? right, right. So that they know. Um, I think another good thing is to to make sure that they have rewards. And uh, one of the great things that we did with our sheepdogs is we you talk to them with a, a lot of enthusiasm in your voice, and people might think you're nuts, but when they start to do what you what they're supposed to do, like. Go to the bathroom outside. Let me hear what you say. You're a great girl. Here's what you want to hear what I say. Listen it's to almost what, like you're talking to a baby. Listen to what I say. Here's how I do it when they go to the restaurant. No, 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 I no. go, yeah, whatever. No, you yeah, don't. Yeah, I do. You, have to, you, you, you got to kick it up a few notches, Eric. How about this? Yeah, hey. whatever. No, it's going to be forest. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Right, For, forest, yay! You you did that. You did it with your babies, right? When your kids were growing up, you made a big deal. Yeah, yay, I did. Yeah, probably right? much more. So, so. It's, it's about like that. All right, I'll and, try it. And then, of course, it's about making sure that the home is safe. Um, you know, for for the well, dog. yeah, he's chewing on electrical cords. Not good. And so I'm thinking either one of two things will happen. One, he'll get shocked and go, "That's probably not a good idea." Or two, he'll pass away. Well, and that would be That's horrible. not good either. <laughs> so really, pet-proofing your home is pretty much like child-proofing your home. So when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the things like the medications you want to make sure aren't around. There's certain kind of foods to keep around in. And just making sure that whether it's dangling wires or you know what. Or my carpet strings. Yeah, because it's, it's just, you know, it can be very scary, you know, for that cute little sure. new friend of yours. Yeah. Anyway, you're listening to Home Wizards because we love pets. We thought we'd talk about That's ways it. to pet-proof I, your apparently home. Apparently, I love them so much I've got birds and dogs You now. got it all. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, we love to improve your home and improve your life. Yeah, that's the theme of my, my pet forest right there. Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards, where uh, we love to improve your home and improve your life and improve your relationship with your dog in your well, home. That's it. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Strong. And uh, I have two old English sheepdogs, Bailey and Abby, and you have now... I have a Labradoodle and now a Lab yeah, named Forrest. Forrest. He's probably and about Hazel, two and a half months. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Hazel is how old? Hazel's Seven? probably five or five. six years old and then and probably one of the great... You know, what happens is these little new dogs come into the house and you realize what a great pet you already have. I know. And, and there's all, it's almost the same feeling I had when I had my second kid where you, how could I possibly have more love than I have see, for this one see. thing, right? But well, you do. It's exponential. And you basically rescued a dog by adopting this dog, which is great. Yep. And uh, in our case, um, we had um, our, our Bailey had a puppy. And she just had one puppy. And that was a while ago. So Bailey is 12 and Abby is about mm, like a six. Yeah. Um, but I really loved seeing the difference in the younger dogs and the older dogs and what they bring uh, to your life, you know. But getting them to that point, I mean, it took a while to it, have them potty you forget, trained. You forget how long it takes. It takes a while. And so yeah. the crating thing really works. And then the reward system to, you know, to walk. You know, of course, I mean, you've got to walk them and get them out to go out as often as possible. But the accidents are going to happen, you yeah, know. And no once question. it went, those accidents start, I cannot tell smell, you how, how good I'm getting at quickly whisking a good. pet Oh, I'm picking it up. Oh, well, I've gotten very fast. But once, almost like I'm at a car wash. That's how you know, and I'm just scrubbing down the windows. Then, That's but how then, fast especially when it. they're a puppy and they smell that that was where they did it, then they want to do it again. Yeah, there, and I've been you know? I've been dumping white vinegar. Yeah. over the area after I clean it up. Kind of helps. I don't know. Kind Maybe. It's, we'll see. it's okay. I um, haven't had any. Re- a, I haven't had repeat spots. It's just good. all over. <laughs> well, let's walk through some of the things to, to puppy-proof your home, yeah. both inside and outside. Okay, of course, let's say um, if you do have a deck or a balcony or, or upper level uh, with open windows, you want to make sure that um, you know that the puppy can't walk through. Yeah, and a, if, and, a, and a good way to do that, obviously, is you, you just take your puppy's head and torso and see if they can get through that uh-huh. space, like yeah. either the width of the, of the rails on your deck. You want to just right. hold them and make sure they can't get all the way through. 
you know, and if they can, you can put up some chicken wire and 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 use baling wire to hold it in place on the tines of your mm-hmm. decking rail or whatever it is that you have. That that's really helpful. Also, check your perimeter yard gates. Right. Make sure they can't crawl under any fences or any gates that you have. When I was living in an apartment, I had a balcony. And uh, this was years ago, a different dog. This was Crystal. And uh, I was just in the other room. And somehow she managed to nudge open the sliding glass door. I was on the second story to get onto the, the little balcony thing. And, and it was near a golf course. And I guess she saw like a gopher or a squirrel or something. Sure. Squirrel. And, yeah. so, <laughs> squirrel? Yeah. and so she basically flew through the air and jumped up and over the railing wow. of the balcony, landed on the grass and went chasing after something. And she was fine, but it was like, wow, that could have been really scary. We had a cat that actually put its head through the gate and was stuck there overnight. And I came out the next morning to just see this little kitten going, row, row, oh. row, row, oh. with his head stuck oh. in the oh. gate. And he wasn't Terrible. able to pull it away. But finally he did. But then, unfortunately, a few months later, he, he disappeared, I think, maybe. Uh-huh. Went to the land of coyotes or something. It was well, terrible. I think that uh, speaking of gates, that you know, the, you've you now have some of these kitty gates that I gave you to put in your yes, home. Yes, and, and that's and that's great. I for think the that's stairs. great to control yeah. to confine your space inside or outside because that really, especially if it's a puppy, I think yeah. if you start with a small area and that's their zone, and then eventually you kind of give them more and more area as they get more confidence sure. and as they follow the rules because exactly. otherwise it's open season it really is because they're you know and they dis forest will disappear in my house and all of a sudden i'll realize oh he's up in willow's room quick run up right. the stairs he's got like seven toys and he's chewing all the great stuff that she loves up so he's a chewer there's oftentimes it's a chewer or a digger mm-hmm. this particular dog's a chewer yeah what well, ours has been a chewer at our in fact abby would chew the molding yeah. Great. This dog wrestling this dog is wrestling and growling at corners. Terrible. He'll lay in the corner and just go <laughs> oh, and he's just like pretending to bite the corner. Yeah. He might have he might have some special needs issues. There are some things you can buy by the way to um to make it taste I think it's called bitters like apple bitters you can buy in some of the pet stores Great. to to put on uh, furniture and different I'll have spots to, I'll have to bathe my mother's legs yeah. in those before she but comes But basically next it time. makes it makes that area not tasty to the pet and then yeah. they kind of learn that that's a no you that's know a great idea. but it's all about discipline and monitoring your pet because if they learn right away you know in fact one thing that we did was we got a tennis ball can yeah and we put some coins in it and you would shake it and that noise would be like that, you know, no, like that, or just the sound, and that they kind of learn over time. Well, and, and it's also a great thing to play along to the song All Night Long by Lionel Richie to give you that little shaka 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 I love how your whole family is so musical, including the pets. That's right. You know, they're multi-talented that way. They have yeah. a video coming out. Uh, you know, there's also a lot of things that can be dangerous outside, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Any, anything, especially garbage. The plants. You know, the plants. There's Poisonous some un- plants. Unedible plants, In obviously. fact, there's, if, you've, if you uh, go, there's a, there's a great website. In fact, if you go to the humanesociety.org, uh, they have some links to show you the list of all of the... The, um, the puppy tested lawns or puppy dangerous plants. Right. And I didn't realize this, but a lot of times you might use some mulch, and there's a certain kind of mulch, cocoa mulch, and it, to dogs it tastes like chocolate, and it can be toxic to them. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah, and you and you also have to watch things like poinsettia and mistletoe and philodendrons. Um, lilies are bad. Azaleas are bad for the dogs. Hydrangeas aren't working either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as spring shows up and these things start to bloom, just keep an eye out. At that point, the dog, hopefully, if you've got got one the same time that I have, it'll probably be a little further along, hopefully, and not so much into eating absolutely everything it can find. But, you know, the thing that I ultimately ended up doing with Hazel, originally my Labradoodle, we took her to boarding school and, and shipped See? her off for about three weeks. Oh, you shipped her off. But you know what? The class is really as much for the owner as it is for the dog. Well, this in this case... Hazel came back like a 40s gangster. You know, really? you would just see her in your bed going like, what? What are you doing? I'm, I'm sitting here smoking, see? And I've got a, I got a little issue i got to deal with with a dame down the street. You know, I mean, really? she was really... Well, she's very well behaved. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's almost like a person in a dog see? suit. Yeah. So, totally, make sure that you sign up for a, a class. And a lot of the, the pet stores, like Petco, they sure, have Sure, Petco has one that's discounted. about 100 bucks, And you go there for a six It's in the visits, store. It's in the store. Yeah. And there's somebody there that trains you with the dog. Exactly. And Which yes, is very cool. And to your cool. point, you're right. The 
the the owner does have to be trained. Yeah, too, because to, you know we we spoil our pets right. and and we want to overfeed them and overlove them and then we want to you know kind of cheat and say okay, right, you can sleep then, on my and bed. And that turns into a, a life of being taken advantage of by the dog. So, so you, you got to set these boundaries. Pretty so right early. now. Our our dogs um, from time to time do sleep on our bed, but I do think that when you're first training a dog, it's a good idea to not let them sleep yeah. in your bedroom or on your bed to kind of give them, whether it's in a crate or a confined area, as hard as it is, because they're going to be whining and stuff. Sure. But I think that it, it just kind of gives them a sense, like it becomes their zone, and it gives them a sense of security. Somehow and, the crate mysteriously ended up literally right next to my place where I sleep. So it's it basically like Forrest and I are sharing the See, bed I together. think Forrest is your new little bud, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, my mother-in-law's in town, Marilyn, and she's she's not a huge see? fan of Forrest. And well, as, right. as a matter of fact, taking Hazel out alone on its own walk and then leaving Forrest by, you know, so we got some issues, some family therapy got, we're going to have. You got to work through yeah. it. Uh, some other things to think about um, in terms of puppy and dog proofing your home. You talked about the electrical cords, right, yeah. that you don't want exposed blocking off the stairs, right, with uh, the, the child or baby gates, uh, but also the trash cans, right? Yeah. The, you got to ab- keep absolutely. all that. you got to keep even, that sealed up. There's no question. And the recycling, you know, even even that, Forrest has already pulled that over, uh-huh. pulled out some of the containers that were in there, and then, you know, it, it just gets incredibly And messy. then in your bathroom, you need to make sure that all of your medicine is up and away. Nothing worse than a puppy hopped up on, uh, you know, meds. Am I right? Don't That's want it. Not good. Not going to do it. Yeah. So all your medication should be up on a bedside table or or someplace where this dog can't get to it. But mm-hmm. boy, can they can they get to things if they really want to. So. And then let's talk, let's talk about some of the positive things that you can do. I mean, I do think that not only having uh, dog training, puppy training right away is it can be so much fun, and I think it really. Uh, connects you and and uh, seals the bond between the owner and the pet, you know, because it reaches that point where I remember when Abby was first kind of going through some of her growing pains, she would resist and sometimes even growl at me when I would tell her what she was supposed to do and not do. But then like you see on some of these, you know, TV shows that the, the professional trainers that when you really do show them that you are the pack leader and you earn that respect, right. then the bond gets even closer over time. And then they just kind of, they go on their back and they surrender, yeah, and and it's like they just they love you to death. I've tri- and I've you know? tried that where you almost tackle the dog and yeah, then flip it over. Exactly, on its you back. want you want to be able to get them yeah. to that point because yeah. then there's total trust and total love forever. That's right. So we'll put some of these tips on on the website because I mean you, you know there's so much to think about when it comes to extending your your heart and home to this furry friend.